Well, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us for another Farmer Friday. I'm Cameron King, CEO and Ambassador for Certified American Grown, and really have the distinct pleasure today of welcoming Frank and Pamela Arnosky from Arnosky Family Farm in Texas, uh, but they also have a number of other uh, things that they're working on. So, uh, Frank, Pamela, welcome to Farmer Fridays. It's a pleasure to have you with us today. Thanks. We're glad to be here. Awesome. Well, why don't we dive right on in and uh, tell us a little bit about uh, Arnosky Family Farm. And, and I know you've also got Texas specialty cut flowers and, and the Blue Barn. It sounds like you've got a lot of different things going on. Tell us a little bit about yourselves. Uh, our, our business has a lot of different um, crazy ideas going on at one time. We are, are um, a large wholesale flower farm. We raise cut flowers for grocery stores in Texas here. And we also have started a retail market that has been kind of growing on its own as a self-serve market um, at our farm. And that has kind of taken off these days. In fact, this year it's become more than 50% of our business. And um, we also have a peony farm in Minnesota and a peony farm in far west Texas in the mountains of west Texas. So we're kind of scattered. It's, it's uh, juggling a lot of things at one time. Sure, so it sounds like you're covering quite a bit of territory, but but the main farm and, and everything is there in Texas Hill Country, is it not? Yes, the blue barn that we built in 2006 is sort of the face on our farm, the center of what we do. It's where people think of when they think of Arnosky Family Farm and the Texas Hill Country. It's well, become I'm, our logo. It's, 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 it's our logo. The blue barn is, is the icon that's on our logo. So when people see our sleeve and they have the big blue barn with the sunflowers in the foreground, um, we've had people actually stop us on an airplane when they see us carrying a bouquet on. It says, "Do you know those people?" And they say, well, <laughs> we kind of are those people. Um, That's so pretty it, cool. It's we we followed the the branding idea from Campbell's Soup and everything else to do something iconic that everybody's going to know and see. And the Blue Barn has taken on a life of its own. Well, and that Blue Barn has a pretty special story in and into itself too. Was that not a uh... Uh, a community barn raising uh, kind of project to bring together? Um, that's right. We we had the idea to, to build a farm stand. And then we looked at some of the old uh, German architecture in the hill country. And some of these beautiful old halls are built with this um, laminated arching truss work. And we talked to some carpenters and some furniture builders and they said, let's do a barn raising. And we said, let's do a barn raising. They helped put that together and, and we had 200 people came out and put this building wow. together. And it is it is built like a piece of furniture. Every stick of it is measured and, and placed like it was the furniture, it built with love. And it took two and a, it took two and a half weekends to build it. So five, that's five, all. Days. five days. Five days. Wow. And wow, we, that's we cooked food and had music the whole, you know, live music the whole time off to one side. Um, it was a whole undertaking. When you bring the community in like that, there's a sense of ownership that people still have here going on 15 years later. Um, and it, it went so far as to everybody had a different idea what color we were going to paint it. But uh, we already had used a little blue house in our logo and we just thought we're going for it. We're going bright blue. It's supposed sure. to be the color of heavenly blue morning glories. Ah, fantastic. And it's a beautiful blue for sure. And and truly iconic. I think a lot of times when people think of of barns, you know, they think of of red or or white barns or even or natural wood. So to have that blue and have that connection to to the flowers, what a spectacular story and and iconic uh differentiator from everybody. I think that's pretty spectacular. It, so now you mentioned that you mentioned that you're farming peonies up in in Minnesota. What what are you farming in terms of cut flowers there in Texas? When, in Texas, we'll grow whatever will grow in its season. So sure. because Texas is a harsh place to have to grow anything, so we start the year with ranunculus and anemones and sweet peas and delphinium and larkspur from a cold frame. And grow in cold frames, and then we do some bulb crops. We do some lilies and some Dutch iris, and okay. then we do a lot of so-called wildflower varieties that are actually placed in beds, like cornflower and um, yarrow. All kinds. Lots of, of rudbeckias, um, wild type flowers that we grow. It's cultivated. And so we make a bouquet called the Texas Garden Bouquet. Oh, 
what it works out to be is if, if it, we can figure out how to make it grow here in Texas, we find out when and where it will grow. And it's usually about a 10 minute window and then it's done and then you know, <laughs> right. something else. Right. And so when we get into the summer, as we're entering now, you, we, we have what I call the same five sunflower zinnias, celosias, gumfrina, and marigolds. marigolds. And over and over. Marigolds are something we should talk about later because we've really pushed the Day of the Dead, but we can we can, we can come around to that. Yeah, I was just going to ask you about that actually, so that's okay. a perfect segue. Tell us a little bit about uh, about the marigolds. I, I understand you're the marigold capital of Texas. We are. I guess somebody had to be. We <laughs> we have been growing marigolds. We've been growing marigolds for nearly 30 years, and we've always had a wonderful market down in the San Antonio community. Um, and people would actually come up to our farm and buy it by the bucket full and buy marigolds. And we, we've really decided to focus on that. And, and last year, we went, really went crazy. And with, with our, our grocery store retailers cooperating, they, they um, moved many tens of thousands of bunches of marigolds in the area. All the whole, over um, the whole state. And they sent them all over the state. And our farm became a focus because we had acres and acres of marigolds planted around the Blue Barn. It was visually just, it was literally stopping traffic on the highway. Sure. And um, so we talked to our Chamber of Commerce and said, why don't we do a marigold festival? And they said, man, that's a fabulous idea. So this fall, we're gonna have a festival in Blanco, Texas. Um, and we, Pamela and I are, are providing marigold plants to the vendors, to the, I mean, to the businesses on the square, to people who want to plant them in the yards, um, try and get a lot of attention. And we're trying to focus on how important this flower is culturally to the Latino community, because I, I realized a while back that, that marigolds are just as important in San Antonio and the Latino community as, let's say, Easter lilies or poinsettias are for their season. And it's, it's really kind of an overlooked crop um, because there's a huge, huge demand for this flower for Dia de los Muertos. Um, it's a very sure. important cultural item. And it also um, carries over into the South, a South Asian market with, the, with uh, India, Nepal, Thailand. Um, the Diwali celebration is in November and that is a huge, um, they, they really count on marigolds. So we have a secondary group of people that count on this flower that come in about a week after Day, Day of the Dead. So, But part of the thing with the barn and the Marigold Festival will personify that is that flowers are connecting all these people in some sense of community. You had COVID last year. People flocked out to the farm because it could be self-serve, wide open. Nobody had to interact with anybody. The whole honor system. And then that is carried over to this year where people are still gardening and they're still coming out and walking our fields. One of the things we do differently that other places might not is you may come onto our farm and come in and buy something, but you can also just without paying, you can go walk through and go to the very specific you know, flower areas that we have. Because we, we keep remembering what's our core business here. We grow cut flowers. Right. We're not really agritourism. We have a farm market, but we, we don't sure. set up situations where people pay to come out to the farm or we don't set up situations where we're providing services at the farm necessarily but they're welcome to tour the farm they're welcome to take pictures we hope they'll buy something and that's the, the idea most people do um right and we just want to make it so that it's community space i mean that's been the yeah. buzzword ever since we built this barn is it's, it's community space right. and during covid that turned out to be just so important to people from Austin and San Antonio who just needed a place to get out in the country. They came out, they sat on our back porch, they brought their mother, they had a lunch, they could be alone. And they told us later on that it was just, they don't think they could have made it if they couldn't have come out to the Blue Barn Farm. Another just... thing is that in the farm, we're using the, the Blue Barn as our packing shed now. And because sure. we're in there so much of the time when people are coming through, we're able to sit there, we talk about where flowers are grown, where they come from, what their uses are, how to make them last longer. And they, that the CAG logo is on it, all the sleeves. And so we're just, we're just like this constant multi, you know, we're marketing this way, marketing that way, telling the story this way and that way. A, a grower we used to know named Ralph Kramer always said, marketing is everything and everything is marketing. And we believe that it's constant. The branding is constant. 
the the marketing is constant the message is constant you you can never lose the thread of what we're doing and you know we like i said we sell flowers right and well and i think that that's an important message is that people need to understand that you know behind these wonderful bouquets of flowers that they might find in in at, with their florist or or in their uh grocery store or wherever they're purchasing uh their flowers from there's people and and this telling the story of that that you have cultivated the land and you have grown these beautiful things that are enriching other people's lives is so important so that connection between community and providing space and and being able to connect with your your flower buyers is pretty spectacular yep yeah, so we have we have an exceptional situation pamela was traveling once in ecuador and visiting some of the larger farms there and when they found out that we had such a close connection with customers they were actually jealous of our situation right. because we we can really truly connect with our buyers in the in the retail markets and, and the wholesale we and can, the wholesale yeah sure so we have a one-on-one -on -one with everybody and because we try to keep it really real we're never selling something that isn't what it is right right it's 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 a true it's a true product a true story it's it's your love and passion that's gone into this so help me um understand a little bit you you mentioned that the seal is on all of your packaging the certified american grown seal and label is are, are on your wraps and in, on your packaging what has that uh done how does that benefit you all in terms of of your commitment to to uh certified american grown well, the first thing I got to say is it's very eye-catching. I mean, you you put we put it on our sleeve. It's not small, and people immediately see it. So it gives us a hook. And also, people the, one of the first things people will say when they see it is, "Well, I didn't I didn't realize flowers were all where, grown in the United where, States. Where right. do they come from?" And then it gives you a launching off point to say, "Well, as a matter of fact," and then you can dot, you, dot, dot. then you can explain the story and you can explain why it's important to American farmers that we support. Right american products whether it be flowers or or farm products of any kind right absolutely absolutely we need to we need to do the best we can to support our fellow citizens absolutely yeah. for and sure so the best thing about so, the brand let you tell your story absolutely so where can uh I, you mentioned that obviously folks can come to the farm and and buy your your flowers directly there or pick flowers directly there um, and that you're also selling into the wholesale market. Where can folks find find your flowers if they're we not sell, coming to the farm? We actually sell to HEB grocery stores and okay. specifically the HEB Blooms program and HEB Central Markets. And Central okay. Markets are the high end. And although HEB has so many great stores now, it's kind of like Central Market is one division is what I should better say. And because our flowers travel in a Texas section, so you can go in and you can say here I'm, I'm here to buy the local flowers i'm here for the texas flowers um heb is a is kind of a texas centric grocery chain i don't know if they're out of the state yet i know they sell in mexico but they are texas and texans love heb right and if right. you say oh we have flowers in heb it's almost like you get a brownie point for just you know like you really made the big time also so. when when you ask somebody you tell somebody, well, I sell an HEB, and they say, oh, and my HEB? And I'll say, which one is your HEB? Because <laughs> my HEB is really a thing. They right. People call it my HEB. It is. Yeah. Wow. It's a, it's a great store to deal with. We've been working with them for like 26 years. And the relationships that you can build up with your fellow Texans, it's just, there's nothing like it. We, we sit in the best of all worlds because we're an hour from San Antonio and an hour from Austin. And within an arc of our farm along I-35, where there's almost 4 million people living, right. but we're sure. out in the country. And right. HB is based in San Antonio, so we could be at their warehouse in an hour. Right. Um, Fantastic. It, it's, it's an ideal situation for both a wholesale and a retail operation. And Texans are very loyal to Texas products. Of course. So, so sticking at American Grown on there next to a Texas is like, okay, it's this additional thing. You, sure. And and one time our daughter had one our daughter's uh, boyfriend walked into a into an H E B looking for flowers to buy for her and it was a store we don't sell at 
but he saw the American Grown logo and he said, I'm going to buy those. And he brought those home to her. And that's so we know how the American Grown logo really does work. It works. He brought her a beautiful bunch of tulips with the American Grown. Yeah. Well, that's label. fantastic. Well, we can talk for hours and hours. I absolutely have, have for thoroughly enjoyed this, but this has flown by so fast. And so I just uh, really want to thank you both, Frank, Pamela, for, for sharing a little bit of time with us and with our viewers today. And uh, really appreciate uh, you sharing the story from Texas there at Arnosky Family Farm. Again, this is Farmer Friday. Check us out. And we uh, look forward to having you follow us at americangrownflowers.org and, and uh, learning a lot more about Frank and Pamela as we go. So thank you both so much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Bye. Bye-bye.